Sometimes a perfect photo has a few imperfections, but with Photoshop's Generator Fill you can fix them in no time. I'm Jesus Ramirez from the Photoshop Training Channel. Today, I'll show you three ways you can use Photoshop's Generator Fill to retouch your photos. Let's jump right into it. In this first image, I'll show you how to remove distracting shadows from her face. This used to be a long and complicated task, but with Generator Fill we can do it in just a few minutes. Start by enabling the selection brush. You can tap the L key on the keyboard or you can select it from the toolbar. Also, this is very important. Make sure you set your opacity to 100%. Then hover over your shadow and resize your brush by tapping on the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard until it's just wider than the shadows you want to remove. On North American keyboards, the bracket keys are located to the right of the letter P. Then brush over the shadows. The overlay indicates the areas that you're going to completely remove with Generative AI. Focus on removing two or three shadows at a time for better results instead of trying to remove them all at once. Once you've made your selection, simply click the Generative Fill button, no prompt is needed, then click Generate. Photoshop will generate three variations that remove the shadows. Click on this icon to cycle through the results and find the best one. In this case, the first one is the one that works best. Notice how the generation completely removed the shadow on her forehead and we kept the highlights in skin texture. This would have taken a long time to achieve in older versions of Photoshop. Again, by working on smaller selections, you can select a variation that works for that area. If you generate an image for the whole face at once, it might not be a good result for all areas. Next, brush over a few more shadows with the selection brush tool and generate again. As always, look through the variations to find the best result. In some cases, the generated images will contain imperfections, but they can still work. For example, in this case, Photoshop generated another shadow over the eye, but it removed a lot of the shadows on the left side of her face. So I'll brush over the shadow on her eye and then generate one more time to get a better result in that area. And in this case, all the other generations look fantastic. Just select the one you like best. And again, keep repeating this process until all the shadows are gone. This is my result after generating a few more variations over the remaining shadows. It looks fantastic. It took a total of nine generations to complete this task. I placed all the generated layers into a group to stay organized. And I can click on the group's eye icon to disable the layers to compare the edited version with the original. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, hit like now and subscribe. Let me now show you how to fix unkept hair using the Generative Fill. Start by enabling the Selection Brush tool. You can tap on the L key on the keyboard or enable it once again from the toolbar. Again, opacity needs to be set at 100% and simply paint over the areas that contain the unkept hair. You can be loosier, no need for precision, but I would keep as much as the original content as possible. Then simply go into Generative Fill, no prompt is needed and click on Generate. Click over the variations to see which one you like best. In this case, I don't necessarily like a single one to keep it as my final result, so I will click on the Generate button from the Properties panel to generate three additional variations. I'll look through them all, and in this case, I think I like the first one the best. Next, let's look at a technique that allows you to remove small imperfections from the generated images. To show you how this works, We'll start by brushing over his hairline to remove the flyaway hairs. And from the Properties panel, you can also click on the Generate button. Again, no prompt is needed. I will now cycle through the results. And all the generations look very good. Here's the before and the after. I'm going to zoom in so I can show you one thing. If some of these generations contain small imperfections, you don't have to use the Generator Fill once again to fix them. Instead, what I recommend is creating a new layer then going into the Remove tool, which is nested under the Spot Healing Brush tool. From here, you can decide when Photoshop will use Generative AI for the adjustment. Auto means that Photoshop will decide, or you can choose to always have it on, or you can disable it. In this case, we're going to leave Generative AI off. There are two reasons why you would consider to turn this off. Number one is so that you save generative credits, and number two, so that the removal process is much faster since you don't have to upload an image to the cloud and wait for the generation. So in this case, we're going to use the remove tool with generative AI off and we're going to sample all layers so that we can work non-destructively on this blank layer. And all I'm going to do here is paint over the small imperfections there, those strands of hair. And notice that the removal process is faster and we don't have to wait for a generation. 
I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to the screen and you can see the result. Then with the top layer selected, I'll hold shift and click on the first generative fill layer we created and press control G on Windows, command G on the Mac to put it all into a group. And you can see the original image and the edited version. Let's now look at some clothing retouching techniques. Again, to start, I'm going to tap on the L key to enable the selection brush tool. And I'll start by painting over the wrinkles here on his leg. Then, just as we've been doing before, I'll click on Generator Fill, leave the prompt blank, and click Generate. And in just a few moments, Photoshop will give us three variations removing those wrinkles. I'll cycle through the variations. And in this case, the second one is the best one. It completely removed the wrinkles from his pants, making this a better image. But what about more challenging wrinkles like the ones on his arm here? If I wanted to smooth out the wrinkles on his jacket, I could use a similar technique, but I have to be a bit more cautious. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to start by making a selection around these areas. I don't want to select the seams and I want to keep the pattern that goes into them just to keep the jacket as realistic as possible with the original design. All I'm really doing here is targeting the shadows and the folds that make up the wrinkles, but leaving as much of the pattern as intact as possible. And I think this selection will work. We still have the seam and we still have the pattern that goes into the seam. Then I'll click on Generator Fill, leave the prompt blank and click Generate. Photoshop will do a fantastic job in removing those wrinkles. Let me click through all the variations to see which one works best. In this case, I think number one works really good and it might be just a little too flat, but let me show you a trick on how to fix that. With the topmost layer active, I'll hold shift, click on the background, then I'll right click and choose convert to smart object to place all these layers into a smart object. Now I can treat this as a single layer. I'll go into filter and choose liquify. From here, I can use the four warp tool to push pixels in or pull them out and try to create a better shape for that arm. Then you can press the P key on the keyboard to see the original image and press the P key again to see the edited version. When you're done, simply press OK and those changes will be applied to your image. If you need to make any adjustments to the generated layers, you can double click on the Smart Object thumbnail to open it up in a new tab. Notice that we have all our generations here and every layer we're using in this project. And we can continue making other adjustments. For example, I'll zoom in and I'll create a selection over this area to generate a tie. When I come back to the beginning where I started and let go, Photoshop will fill in those pixels. And what we're going to do is go into Generator Fill and type in the prompt black tie and generate by pressing the Enter key on Windows, which is the return key on the Mac. And again, I'll cycle through the variations to see which one I like best. I think that in this case, I like the third one the most before and after. Notice that we have one imperfection here that we can easily fix. I'm going to zoom into the corner of his laptop and you can see that Photoshop generated content on top of that corner. So what I could do to fix that is click on the layer mask for that generative layer. Then with the brush tool active and black as my foreground color, I can paint over the layer mask to reveal the original laptop. And this makes the image look much better and much more realistic. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And now you can see the original version and the edited version. Much, much better. Then I can close the Smart Object tab, save it, and all the changes will be applied to our working document. And if you made it this far, hit like now and subscribe. I'm Jesus Ramirez. Thank you for watching.